Hello everybody, it is Nubs80 bringing you your first Daisy standalone FPS increase tutorial. I've been meaning to get to this for about a week now. I've had a lot of viewers ask me why does my Daisy look so goddamn good? Well guys, I'm going to show you exactly what I have changed today to make yours look good. Now this will only apply to NVIDIA users as I am not an AMD user. So I don't have any AMD Crossfire configurations for you. With that being said, let's get started with some basics. Now what you need to do first is you need to browse to your documents folder. If you're running Windows 8, it's pretty simple. You click the folder right down here. Come right to your documents folder, look for your DAISY folder. Once in your DAISY folder, you will have three text files. All you need to do is right click on them if you've never done this before. Go to open with, select WordPad. Once you've done that, come into your DAISY configuration file. Now, all you need to do is scroll down to this section right here. Let's go ahead and highlight it for you and I will zoom in so you can see it nice and clear these two lines of text CP or excuse me GPU underscore max frames ahead equals set that to one I've already adjusted mine as you can clearly see same thing with GPU underscore detected frames ahead equals set it to one as well those are the only two lines of text you need to adjust in that file now for those who got confused that is your daisy dot cfg file which you can find under your documents folder in your windows now your next folder you need to adjust is your daisy profile you don't need to touch anything with the vars dot daisy profile just the daisy profile so let's open up the daisy profile You're going to see a lot of lines of text once again if you've never opened it before right click select open with and select wordpad now there's a whole lot of stuff in here, but there's only a few things we need to adjust and they're at the very bottom. So what you need to do is just go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom, scroll all the way down and we're going to go ahead and magnify it. So it's a little easier for you all to see. Now here is what you're really interested in. This is what's going to give you your performance right here. Let me select these three lines and it's only actually these two lines that are important. Scene complexity and view distance. By default, scene complexity is 500,000. You need to lower this. Depending on what kind of system you're running, you need to lower it a lot, or you may need to lower it a little. I wouldn't really go down below 150,000. My system seems to run great on 300,000. I know I have a better system than a lot of people, but it runs great at 300,000 on my system. Now, the other one you need to adjust is view distance. View distance by default is set to 3,000. Uh, I run mine personally on 2,000, but once again, I don't see where there would be an issue going all the way down to 1,000 if you wanted a little extra performance. So once again, in this folder right here, the only two lines you you need to mess with is scene complexity. Take that down to, I've got mine set at 300,000, but I, I would say you could probably easily go to 150,000 if you needed to. And view distance by default is like 3,000. I took mine down to 2,000, but I you could probably go down to 1,000. It wouldn't be an issue. But realize this now. The lower you go, the less distance you're going to see and the less quality things are going to look. So I would try my settings first. If they're not good enough for you, play with them a little bit. Take them down a little further. When you go to exit this file, as soon as you go to exit, since you've changed things, make sure you save. I don't have to save because I did not change anything, but if you had edited it, which is the point of you're watching this video is so you can edit, make sure to save when you exit those folders. All right, guys, next thing on the agenda. Right here, in Steam, in Steam. Right click on Day Z. Go to Properties. Under properties, you should have this right here, set launch options, set launch options. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy all this out of here so you can see it. Uh, if I can get it to work, uh, it's not working. Ew, no, no, there, no. Hold on. Here we go. Let's get it to copy, try to copy it all out and I will post it. Actually, I will post it below the video and everything to make it simpler. 
but this is going to be dependent on everybody's system everybody's system is going to be a little bit different these this is entirely based upon your system what these settings are now let me find oh hell let's make it easier wordpad here you go i'm going to explain what these are and let me zoom in for you once again these are the launch options i am using and i'm going to explain what these do this first one right here dash no pause what that does is it speeds up the launching of the game when you launch the game if you put that dash no pause in your launch options you don't get that bohemian flash screen or anything your game actually launches quite quickly next line dash cpu count i am running an i7 so technically i have eight cores although only four physical cores there are four thread cores too so if you're running a dual core processor you need to put two here if you're running a quad core processor with hyper threading you need to put eight here if you don't understand what hyper threading is or anything else this tutorial may be beyond you okay max memory this is the amount of memory that is in your system and my computer I have 16 gigs of memory and how you figure that out to get the exact number is each gig is 1024 megabytes so if you have 8 gigs take 8 times 1024 12 gigs 12 times 1024 so on and so forth figure out exactly how much memory you have in your system BAM put that number there X threads that is the you know I have a quad core processor I have four hyper threads so since I only have four hyper threads four threads if you had a dual core processor with two hyper threads say you're running something like a, an i7 920 you would have two CPU count two external threads for that example max VRAM that's the video RAM on your graphics cards see I have two 780 super clocks with three gigs of RAM so once again six gigs of video RAM six times 1024 equals 6144 if you have a graphics card that only has two gigs of RAM well that's gonna be 2048 three gigs of RAM that's gonna be 3072 four gigs so on so forth do the math four times 1024 you put these lines of text right here I'm gonna go ahead and well screw it eh, no I'll cancel it just discard this I'm not saving this for right now I'll put it all in there what you do though is you put all those lines of text right here in your steam under the launch options for the game and you make sure that it is configured for your system so the proper CPU count the prox the pro that 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 little tongue-tied I'm not editing this shit we're just gonna go right on through the proper amount of memory in your system the proper amount of threads on your processor and the proper amount of video RAM on your graphics card now that that is done we have one last thing we can do one last thing you if you do not already have it on your system what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to download Nvidia inspector and how you get that just Google Nvidia inspector right there you can find it just that quickly just that easily Google Nvidia inspector download that you're gonna need it Nvidia inspector looks like this when you launch it when you launch Nvidia inspector it comes up just like this what you need to do there's a little wrench and a screwdriver you click that that's gonna bring up your profiles once you have your profiles up what you need to do is come up here start typing Daisy there it is you can see it's the last one on the list you select Daisy this is gonna bring up your Daisy profile now if you're running SLI and you want it to work for Daisy this is what you need to do under SLI compatibility bits you need to select the 0x02506405 compatibility bits it will say crisis arma 2 operation arrowhead take on helicopters arma 3 arma 2 crisis 2 crisis 3 crisis warhead merchants of brooklyn and whatever the fuck the rest of that shit is that's the compatibility bits you need to select you should be able to see it right here on screen that's what you need 
under anti-aliasing, leave that what it is. Uh, NVIDIA predefined FXAA, leave that what it is. I know you'll see the green cogs. Those should be standard where they're set. The only other thing you should change, well, oh, see, I just changed it all right there, but I'll fix that here in a moment. What we need to do now is come on down right down here to SLI, which has all changed because my compatibility is, God damn it, why? Why do you do this? Okay, got screwed up there. Hold on. Da, 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 right there. That's the one we need. Now, when we come down to this profile, I'm going to have to actually reset all this right now because all this just got screwed up. Not a big deal, though. We can fix it. So you'll actually see what I'm doing, what I have changed. So come down to the SLI section. Under number of GPUs and SLI rendering mode, hit the down arrow. Select, if you have SLI, you have two cards, unless you're running three-way SLI. But if you're only using two cards, select two. Number of predefined number of GPUs based on SLI rendering. Come down, select, select predefined GPU count DX2. That's what you need to select. Number of predefined GPUs to be used on SLI. Go ahead and highlight that, select down. And what you need to select, once again, is two right there sli predefined gpu count two keep working your way down we should have another option right here now it is this is nvidia predefined sli mode on DirectX 10 what you want to select here is sli predefined mode dx10 afr2 that's what you want to select there Next one, NVIDIA predefined SLI mode. Come down here, bring the arrow down. Same thing. SLI predefined force mode AFR2. You want to force AFR2. Skip SLI indicator, come down to SLI rendering mode. Highlight, drop down, and, excuse me. Select SLI Rendering Mode Force AFR2. That's all you have to do. That's all you need to adjust in here. Oh my God, this video is getting long. Holy shit. All right, guys, that is all you need to do. Once you have done that, you simply come back up to the top, select Apply Changes. Once you've selected Apply Changes, you should be good to go, guys. That is all I have changed for the game. Good luck. I hope it really helps you. If you have any questions, follow me up on the Twitter or I will catch you in the next live stream or I will try to answer your questions as best as I can. Like I said, I will post most of this information in the what era. <laughs> I'm just fucking all up here. I will post most of, the, most of the information about the text and everything right below the video in the information section. I hope this helps you guys. I will see you all next time.